Committee on Oversight and Government, Re Government Reform will come to order. Without objection, the Chair is authorized to declare recess at any, any time. We have an important hearing today about law enforcement's use of facial recognition technology. Uh, it's an exciting technology. Uh, the world of technology uh, offers us a lot of opportunities, but just because we can doesn't mean we necessarily should. And so there are a number of things that we need to have discussions about um, and try to figure out and tackle as a, as a society. And this is uh, one in a series of things that we're going to be discussing uh, uh, in the, this year and next uh, as uh, technology brings us to new frontiers and new paths and new things that we need to, to dive into and, and look at. Because again, while there's a lot of excitement and a lot of opportunity, there's also opportunities to have it misused or overused or create a whole other set of problems that maybe our nation and our society and our generation have not yet dealt with. This happens to be uh, one of those uh, types of, of technologies. Uh, facial tech, uh, recognition technology, it is, it is exciting what can be done, um, but we have to, uh, to look at how, how this affects law enforcement and our rights as Americans. Um, particularly suspicionless Americans uh, in our right for privacy. You know, the, the days of uh, the old Sherlock Holmes uh, dusting for fingerprints and looking for clues, uh, they're being replaced by algorithms and software scanning millions of images at unprecedented speeds to match a, a face to a, to a name. However, like many technologies used in the wrong hands or without appropriate parameters, it is ripe for abuse. Therefore, the oversight of the use of this technology is essential. Until recently, fingerprint analysis was the most widely used biometric technology for positively identifying arrestees and linking them to previous criminal history. In 2010, the FBI began replacing its legacy fingerprint, fingerprint database with an updated database that incorporates advancements in biometrics such as facial recognition calls that, called the Next Generation Identification, or NGI. This is a database uh, with an estimated cost of $1.2 billion. The FBI claims the NGI system, quote, brought the FBI's biometric identification system and criminal history information into the next to the next level, end quote. Unfortunately, the FBI failed, failed to fulfill its statutory duty to inform the public of this new next level capability and used facial recognition technology for five years without publishing the required privacy impact assessment as required by law. Further, agreements are in place with 18 states that allow the FBI to request those states search their databases, including driver's license databases using facial recognition technology. And if we have a graphic, let me have them put that up here, if we could. Uh, just to give you, um, those uh, states in the, in the dark blue are the ones that have various types of relationships uh, with the FBI. Those in the light blue do not have those types of relationships, um, but you can kind of get a sense of where the nation is going and how states are entering into these uh, memorandums of understanding. You can take the, take the graphic down. To be clear, this is a database or a network of databases comprised primarily of law-abiding Americans. Eighty percent of the photos in the FBI's facial recognition network are of non-criminal entries. Each of the photos from driver's licenses uh, they come from places like uh, driver's licenses, passports, and, and what, whatnot. It would be one thing if facial re recognition technology were perfect or near perfect, but it clearly is not. Facial recognition technology does make mistakes. For example, in a test the FBI conducted prior to deploying NGI, roughly one in seven searches of the FBI system returned a list of entirely innocent candidates even though the actual target was, actually, was in the database. I also have concerns about studies suggesting facial recognition technology may have been unintended, have an unintended racial, gender, or age bias or deficiencies. Any technology biases or weaknesses correlating to race, gender, and age raise some serious concerns and need to be widely known and contemplated by law enforcement, legislative bodies, and the judiciary. 
Facial recognition technology is a powerful tool for law enforcement that can be used to protect people, their property, our borders, and our nation. The private sector may use technology to control access to sensitive information, protect financial transactions, verify time and attendance, and prevent uh, fraud or identity theft, among other uses. But it can also be used by bad actors to harass or stalk individuals. It can be used in a way that chills free speech and free association by targeting people attending certain political meetings, protests, churches, or other types of, of uh, places in the public. Perhaps most concerning is the prospect of its real-time use to track people's location throughout the day, a potential use that would fundamentally change what it means to live in a free society. For those reasons and others, we must conduct proper oversight of this emerging technology. I appreciate the witnesses and uh, what, what they bring here. One of the things that we're going to also talk about today is what does it mean when you populate the database? If the FBI could have its way, and the best I can understand, they would put everybody's face in one database or a whole series of databases. And so well, what does that mean? I guess if it's in a secure lockbox that nobody else can look at except the FBI, some people would argue that's a good thing. But we've seen the FBI most recently can't even keep the 702 information uh, private and secure. I don't trust the federal government. I don't believe that there is such a thing where they can keep all of this information uh, locked down and secure. Does anybody really trust and believe that they can create this massive database? Imagine how valuable that database is going to be if they had a, the facial recognition of every single American in their system. And then you could just go online and you could start figuring out exactly who's walking in your door. Um, some companies are actually using this type of technology. They know who you are before you walk in the door. Um, and what does that mean if this information were to get into the wrong hands? So it poses a number of, of issues and challenges. I